You want to kick us off? You kick us off. All right. We're back. <laughs> Two thirds of Uncut Gems is back. Nos teníamos que ir para regresar. Hell yeah. <laughs> hey. had a gut to come back, bro. What's up, man? The comebacks come back. What's you... up, bro? How you been? Chilling. Chilling. Okay. You know, um, we're going to be super rusty, but I was looking up on our Instagram for the yeah. Uncut Gem. Mm-hmm. Shout out Uncut Gem. Shout out Uncut Gem. RIP Uncut Gem. RIP, bro. There, it's up in heaven. Yeah. Everything, I noticed that everything for Uncut Gem is privated because it almost got canceled. You I did, yeah. bro. You got real life ops. <laughs> I got real life ops. Man, uh, fucking, we ain't going to talk about it. No, nah, they ain't going to cancel me. We're um, going to talk about Uncut Gem, though. What happened to Uncut Gem? What happened to us? What happened to you? What happened right, to let me? me ask you something, though. Do you remember when's the last time we uploaded to Uncut Gem? For sure. What when? Uh, it was like uh, about to be winter. It was sorry, no, was it? No, no, no. It was March twenty fifth, two thousand twenty one. By the date, yeah, March twenty fifth, two thousand twenty one was the last time we uploaded to Uncut Gem. So we were in winter. Yeah, it I was just winter. remember being cold. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was like a, oh, it was a month after my birthday. Right. Yeah. In the last episode, I think we had before that we had him recorded for like a month. Yeah, huh? Yeah, we took a break. The last one was fire. The resurrection was it's a great episode. I've listened sure. to that twice since then. Yeah, bro. Like boys only episodes was cool as hell. Yeah, yeah. But so. we're we're back. Uh, this is basically gonna be just Edgar and I. Um, yeah. I don't know. What do you do? You need to say anything else about, about Uncut Gem? Yeah, dude, Uncut Gem was a great like learning experience, bro. It was like it literally like marketing, yeah. equipment, how hard it is to put something together. It is. I think it's harder when there's three people involved because it, it's already hard enough to find time in our schedule. I have yeah. a lot more free time than you do. I feel like. Yeah. So it kind of makes it hard, and then whenever you you have free time, it, I'm like, oh, you're doing I'm like, something. I'm doing something. Yeah. Uh, but we're trying. We're gonna try to be as consistent as possible with this pot. This podcast that doesn't have a name yet. No. We were do- we're gonna go with uncut podcast, but which the- is cool. But it's like it sounds like we're two uncircumcised dudes for sure. Uncut. Yeah. Are you listening to the uncut pod? <laughs> <laughs> right. They get yeah. all that extra, extra on them. They're 110. <laughs> percent Well, no, Got I guess if you're skin. not if you're uncircumcised, you're 100. percent If you're circumcised, you're 90. Yeah. percent Because yeah, yeah, they, they take yeah, cut, yeah. You're right. So no, nah, dude, like, it um, only took two minutes to get. I know, <laughs> stupid with it, yeah, like <laughs> talking about some bullshit. It's all good. That's what this podcast yeah. is about, bro. Honestly, I think this podcast can be better described as I think it's going to be a collection. Of whatever we're going through yeah. in our lives. And if people can relate, awesome. If not, I think it'll be super cool if we're like 50. And then we yeah. go back and listen to like 25-year-old Max. I know, dude. Like 50-year-old Max listening to uh, 25-year-old Max and then thinking like, oh, man, this guy's stupid. Like, Or he ended up doing this or he ended up not doing that. Or maybe we're 50 and we just still potting. And maybe, nobody listening. <laughs> maybe we died at 27 and they should yeah. live forever. That's true. Yeah. No, this dude, is going to yeah. be, this is going to outlive us. Anything For that sure. we upload to the internet yeah. is going to outlive us. Yeah. yeah. That's, which is a cool part. My dad was telling me yesterday, like, um, he was like, dude, I remember when you were like three years old, like, we'll go to this pizza place and I'll get a yeah. beer and then you eat a slice and we'll go to the park and shit. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, that's cool. You know? Like, yeah. Like that shit, like felt real sentimental. Yeah, because we were eating pizza. Yeah, and then he was drinking a beer, I and I was pizza. like, "That's cool as fuck." Yeah. So, and then, then it immediately, immediately, bro, was like, my mind was like, "Oh, the podcast! Like, I can show my kids when I'm yeah. like forty something, you know?" Yeah, and be like, "Dude, this is your dad at twenty six, bro." Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, I think it'll be like a good thing to reflect on, and I think yeah. it, this is like better than, I guess, keeping a diary. Cause you can vividly look back and see right yourself. like you, you actually yeah. you have video you have good yeah. audio but you can let's see from march 25th to now it's been a year and four months yeah so a year and four months bro a lot and of everything has changed everything has changed literally um, everything yeah. bro nothing is the same no nothing i'm a homeowner 
Right. And We're I'm recording a on a hundred thousand dollar studio. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a dad. I'm a homeowner. You're a dad, bro. Yeah. That's crazy, huh? I mean, shit, we can start from there. Like, how has your life changed? Okay, like, like first of all, I hear a lot of people say, like, now that I'm a dad, mm -hmm. I think about, like, all the problems in the world. I, I, like, I have a different view of them. Because it's like, yeah. dude, someone is protesting to, oh, fuck. You know, like, people are having, like, protests about, like, everything, like, whatever, you know, like, a bullshit has reason. Well, I don't want to yeah. call it bullshit. Like, it's, it's probably really important to that person. But, like, for someone with kids they're like bro like i don't give a fuck about what you protesting i'm trying to make sure my kid don't get shot in yeah. school i think type shit. like it's changed me in in like a better way i've de i've definitely changed in in a lot of ways where i didn't think i would have changed i'm still like very much max and you know what that means better than anyone yeah um well i would not better than stephanie but yeah <laughs> yeah you're up there but i think I don't really think like too far out. I'm just trying to make it through whatever she's dealing with now. Mm -hmm. She was she was born two days after my birthday, so I think like right. that was crazy. But then after that, I don't. It's not like it's scary to think that I brought someone into this world and they're gonna have to deal with what I'm dealing now. And you know, ever since I so since 18, let's say I started working when I was 18 to right. now. There's never been a time where there's not something happening socially mm -hmm. and I'm working. So like, you know, I started working when I was 18 and, you know, two years later, Trump was in office and everybody was freaking <laughs> out because, yeah. you know, they thought everybody was going to get deported and stuff. Right. And then two years later and the pandemic happens and then, you know, working through that, I had just started like my first office job mm -hmm. and I was like, Oh, dude, you I'm, made I'm a literally, big change. Yeah, I made a huge change. I went from construction to office. Right. And I was two weeks in, and yeah. the pandemic started. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people were getting, like, let go. Not where I was working at, but nationally. You would turn on the news, and it's like, oh, you know, like, we're, we're going into, like, a gray area, and a lot of people were being fired and let go. And I remember thinking, like, what the heck? Like, I'm going to get fired yeah i actually did yeah see and it's crazy to think all that and then bringing someone into this world it's scary to think that they're gonna grow up in this world especially like i'm a girl dad and you know like something big just happened to where like they don't have rights over their body now mm -hmm. and people can have their own opinions about that you know if you're pro-life or or pro-abortion mm -hmm. whatever like that's up to you but it is scary to think that some states are taking it to where, like, even if it's risky for the mom, it doesn't matter. I think if it if you're putting someone's life at risk, it's not worth another life. Mm -hmm. But that's, like, a different topic. I'm not a woman, so I don't want to, like, impose. Like, I think that should be decided by a woman. Yeah, bro. It's a, it's a touchy subject. Yeah. Like anything that you say someone's i mean someone can take it wrong but not even wrong but like you know like anything you say like someone is not gonna like it and then someone else is going to you know there's yeah. always gonna be two sides of the story yeah there's always I'm gonna not, be two opinions I'm, i'd rather be in the middle there in this opinion because i'll yeah. support whatever the, you want to support but i think there should be separation between like you know government and religion Mm -hmm. And I think we're getting into an area where religion is kind of leaking into our government and that can always turn bad. Mm -hmm. But I think I'm more scared about school shootings yeah, than anything else. Yeah. Like I don't own a gun. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not because I don't like guns. I just never owned one. And I've yeah, never... it's boring. Like, yeah. It's like, it's not the usual. Yeah, it's not yeah. usual. Well, it's usual for everyone in Oklahoma yeah. to own a gun. For sure. But it's unusual for us. Yeah. I feel like we come from an area where, like, if you own a gun, you're kind of, like, noted as a bad person. Yeah, dude. I hate yeah. that shit, honestly. And that's with, like, anything. Honestly, yeah. in the Hispanic community, like, it's like, if you oh, own why you gun? got a gun? Why yeah. you need a gun? Like, something bad is going to happen with a gun. Or, like, if you enjoy, like... Hunting or something. Yeah, they're just, like... Yeah. Or if you want to protect your own house, like you or should maybe own it's a gun. just our circle, bro. Honestly, because yeah. like I mean, it could be like it's like anything. Yeah, 
but i but think definitely, like definitely in our, our circle is like that They're yeah like, so we're we're not raised with guns we're no. not raised with like my dad you know what my dad says yeah what do i need a gun i got two hands i'm yeah, like bro yeah, you'll get someone shot has, someone else gonna have one yeah but i i've definitely looked into like carrying yeah just because you never know especially now with uh my baby mm. but it's one of those things that's like am i looking for a problem no but it's nah. it good to have something that will solve a problem yeah for sure but i think school shootings scare me more because you know like a lot of things that have come out from the shooting that happened in texas mm -hmm. where like the cops just waited until something happened or yeah. until the shooter decided to stop like i like it's just hard to look it's hard to look at those videos because it's like the cops i don't want to say they didn't do their jobs because they have families to go to at the end of the day but mm -hmm. whenever they put on their uniform they're choosing to protect the citizens and i think they failed in that instance yeah. now there's been instances where the cops have literally saved lives and you know you have to applaud those cops so you can't paint everyone with the same you know stroke like everybody's gonna be different right but yeah i sure. think they're they do need more training when it comes to like an active shooter or maybe what i was thinking like even like sending out like an alert on your iphone kind of like they do with denver alerts for like, shootings yeah for active shooters i mean but like fuck well yeah it's gonna tell you that yeah. it's there but you well, can't how even many go people in. like during an active shooting how many people don't have like airpods on you know wait what do you mean yeah like think about it if there's an active shooter mm -hmm. and you have like headphones or airpods on you think you'll hear the shots for sure bro yeah what if you're listening to like 50 cents many nah. men <laughs> And nah, the interest just all shots. <laughs> You'll hear, bro. Yeah. Like that's just loud. I've never I've never fired a gun. No? No. It's a it's an eerie feeling. Yeah. Like are you like, man, I could kill someone with that. Yeah, like immediately, bro. Like I, I don't have a lot of experiences with like big rifles, but like handguns yeah. for sure. The first time shooting a fucking like a nine. Yeah. It was like oh shit like yeah. dude it's like this is how uh, it's empowering like you just you feel that yeah the power in your hand and it's like oh shit like this is real <laughs> this is how much ignorance i have when it comes to guns yeah you said i shot a nine and i'm like oh okay and i acted like i knew what you were talking about but you could have said you shot a five or a 45 or a 55 22? and i wouldn't know what you're talking about i'm just oh, like oh okay cool <laughs> nine millimeter bullet it's you is that like the a, size of the bullet yeah like the little the little one the shit yeah. that comes out not the case but uh yeah, yeah just nine millimeter like a handgun you see like just regular handgun yeah and see what i did now is so hard for people to do like admit that they don't know what they agreed to oh no dude yeah, yeah for sure like but that's um it's i've hard. been doing that a lot too like yeah. i'll admit if i don't know something I'm like oh i don't like i just acted like any but can you explain it you know yeah i'm a student of life bro yeah like there's so much to learn but that's my oh, main worry for my baby going back to your question just those two things because i feel like i can provide yeah no do i feel more responsibility yes but i've never let responsibility scare me like i've always yeah. walked into it you know like I mean, i'm gonna i'm gonna keep working you're gonna have to do it regardless yeah you know? eventually like, one day i was gonna have a baby you know yeah i did say many times on uncut gym the yeah, kids are mid, mid. <laughs> kids are mid uh -huh. but my kid is fire fuck yeah so my kid's top tier hell yeah i like it i love her bro it's weird like you you know you love your your significant other and you love your parents and you love your siblings but when that baby comes into your life you're like i did not have this much more love in me yeah it's weird how you make like it's not like you stop it's not like you love everyone else around you less it's that you literally have more love in your life it's weird it's a really weird feeling and nah. it's really hard to put into words it makes sense i mean it makes sense yeah. to me like i can only imagine so yeah um, so yeah has it, has it made you feel like when someone's i don't know bro because like okay let me articulate this say someone's being a fucking dick to you yeah. and that person's just a fucking asshole and you're just like that, he just pisses you off or she just pisses you off yeah you ever just like damn actually i don't even know where the fuck i'm going with this but i'm saying like do you now see people and then you think of your baby like damn that that person was a kid one day and he just grew up like an asshole oh fuck yeah that. 
Does that make you feel like, okay, I, here's my question, what I was trying to say. Do you think a lot about the way that you're raising your kid and like how yeah. is the way that you're raising is going to affect her in the future? Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's hard, right? Yeah. Like you look at people with the different lens. It's like when someone's being rude or whenever someone is like being really aggressive, mm -hmm. you kind of see like, oh, they didn't pick you up as a kid or you didn't get hugged enough or your mom never told you you were proud of you. Or you, I, I tend to really point out like when someone has daddy issues or mommy issues mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh, you got daddy issues or, oh, you got mommy issues. Yeah. But it's one of those things that's like, it's never the mom. So it always falls back on the guy. Yeah. Kinda it's harder. It, it's harder for us. Like I always wanted a girl. I never, like if I have a, a baby boy later in life, I'll love him no matter what, but I wanted a baby girl. Because I feel like if I would have had a boy, yeah, or maybe like my my baby boy's watching this video thirty years from now, mm -hmm. and he'll tell me like, yeah, you did this or you didn't. But I feel like if I would have had a boy, I would project myself on him. And I sometimes there's days where I don't like the person I am. Ah, uh, okay. So I feel like I would have projected myself on the baby, um, and been like, oh, you're gonna play football. Oh, you're gonna do this, you know, or like, oh, you're gonna you know play soccer or no you gotta be a man about it you know yeah and i feel like with the girl you're Fuck, you're more like yeah you're more like tender and you just kind of want to be like no, no no like yeah you know like you just want to protect her and with the baby boy i feel like i would want to like project myself on him like everything that i didn't meet as a, in my childhood i would want him to like you know win the spelling bee or whatever but I, yeah, like I tend to do that with my baby girl too, though. Yeah. Like I'll tell her like, oh, you're going to go to Princeton. Yeah. You can go to an Ivy League school. Like that's not her dream. Like she's four months old. Yeah. Or she'll be five in five days or four days. You know, like I'm already projecting on her and she's not even a year old. And I have to like reel myself back to where I'm like, okay, like she's going to make her decisions. Yeah. You know, I, I can't. Tell, I, like if she grows up and all i tell her is you're gonna go to an ivy league school she might just want to do the like the opposite thing you right know? just because yeah. like i ain't listening to my dad that's yeah. what he wants that's not what i want yeah it always happens but, yeah dude that, that's the thing that scares me the most like not even financial shit not even yeah. like money comes and goes yeah like the shit that really scares me is like oh man i just don't want to race i don't want to fuck up and like raise a fucked up kid you know raise a school shooter <laughs> yeah bro or something like that or not even that just like man i, raise want someone. I just yeah. i don't know man that's a, that's the shit that scares me the most because it's like if you read like certain book books that tells you like if you do this to your kid he's gonna grow up this way and it's like bro literally everything yeah. you do every i try not to read any of that but do you think you're better off being informed about it i think i'm better off with my gut feeling but that's just me being a narcissist thinking that I know what I'm doing is good. <laughs> but it's You're a student of life. I'm a student of life. Yeah. You know what? Um in like the year and in four months that from the last podcast. Yeah. I went to Cabo, which I mentioned several times on the podcast. Uh -huh. And it was amazing. And then I've gone to my hometown or my home city twice. And and like I went to Dallas like nine times. Mm -hmm. So like I've had like a lot of like traveling and whenever you look at other people in different places, yeah, they grow up around their environment and they're used to that environment. Mm -hmm. So I feel like as much parenting as you do, you're still a product of your environment. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, dude, like, definitely. I can only guide her so much, you know, depending on what environment I, I put her in yeah. is how she'll turn out. But then there's, there's also, there's always that outlier. Yeah. That definitely. Just, there's that LeBron James. And yeah. Michael Jordan and everybody that's rich that came from rags. It's really cool. Um, yeah. Well, dude, speaking, speaking of kids and children, did you see what fucking Elon Musk is doing? No, he just putting he surrogates into like 20 different women. Cause he Why? just, he believes that the population is going to fucking drop one day. <clears throat> Cause here's the thing. And it's real, bro. Yeah. Like, um, couples that are like, 
I don't know how to put it, like higher up than like middle class. Yeah. They both have a career and they're doing really good. They often hold on to having kids, right? And then when they finally decide to have kids, that they're just like 40, you know, he's shooting like uh, old yeah. ass loads. So like yeah. that just don't work. So like they tend to have less kids. Um yeah, they just tend really? to have less less kids. So upper class people tend to have less kids because they're more focused on their well. Careers. I wouldn't. You can't say that for everybody, right? Yeah. But like for the most part, that's um, crazy. And I uh, wonder if that has something to do with like how many years they have to go to college and all that. For sure, yeah. bro. Because you're like you're not gonna. I mean, yeah, I feel like people are like really articulated. Like, well, people that have like a that they know what they want. Yeah. And they've been like all the opportunities has been given to them and some of them take advantage of that and it's like why would i not take advantage of this right it's gonna put me in a good position in life yeah so they tend to follow that instead of like thinking of having kids and it's also like it's been proven bro like people that that come from a lower class tend to have more kids and I mean, I don't know why that is. Like, that's just the shit that I read. I'm not saying this. They got more time. Probably. They, they work less, so they got more time. <laughs> I'm Maybe. kidding. I'm I mean, kidding. I don't know, you know? Yeah. Like, that's just shit that I'm, like, reading and the shit that I'm telling you. Yeah. I'm just putting I'm, it out there. I'm honestly good with just one kid. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm I'm okay with just my baby girl. I wouldn't want to. Because I feel like that's how much I can afford. You know, I'm not going to have five kids and then, you know, bring them up in, in like, the worst way possible. You know? Yeah, I think this is a new gener- generation of parents because, like, back back then, like, my yeah. grandma had, like, seven kids. Your grandma like, had seven fuck? kids? My grandma had three kids. Yeah. Yeah, which is kind of low, I guess, huh? For the 70s? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Wait, yeah. no, 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 50s? No, the Your, 60s. 60s? Yeah, my dad's 65 and he's the oldest. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah it's kind of low. Yeah, three, three is kids is low. low. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh. Yeah. But it's, I guess it's different because they lived in a city. You know, they didn't have to keep up with the farm, you know, right? Because I get they were having more kids because somebody had help with you know mowing the lawn or whatever you do in a farm. <laughs> I don't know, like, I mean, I don't know the what cows, it, I don't know what it contributes to, but like, the shit that Elon Musk is doing is crazy, bro. I think he's too full of himself, I honestly. think he's too fucking smart, <laughs> dude. He's too smart. I don't know if it's necessarily that he's too smart. I think he's more of like too self-involved, you know, mm. to like, he's really, really smart. Not everybody can go to the moon. Yeah. And not everybody can explore like outer space the way he's doing it or whatever you want to say about him not or make electric make cars. People. Yeah. But I think he's gotten to the point where he's, he's done so much good. He's turned it into a villain, you know. You think so? Yeah, yeah. If yeah, if nah. you link, if you live long enough, you'll see yourself turn into a villain. You think so? Yeah. You don't think you have the same intentions as you die? I mean, no. You just give you more. Time. No, you just get more greedier as you grow older. But he don't even got a house. He, yes, he does. You think, yeah, you think he, he has to have a house. Yeah, I think he's capping. He's capping, bro. Yeah, probably. I think he's uh. He's too fucking rich. He's trying to live uh, like an instagram lifestyle you know you think so yeah like work <laughs> work uh 24 hours a day uh, don't eat the grind you know? but yeah in how like say he has all this money he doesn't have a house but he's gonna have more kids you know right. that doesn't make sense it like what's the point weird. of having 20 kids if you're gonna have 10 minutes for each one well i don't think he even gives a fuck about that i think yeah. he's just like he just wants the population of he just so wants we, the population yeah. to keep growing because he's just saying that he's doing a modern day holocaust <laughs> no kidding. imagine he's like he's well, just prepping people to do some crazy shit like that yeah imagine all his kids grow up and be elon musk damn yeah that'd be crazy it's one of those things you know he's got enough money to do whatever he wants if you had that amount of money you could literally do whatever you want you know? yeah bro you can give a million dollars to literally every single person in the earth dude what do you think will happen if uh elon musk will give a million dollars to every single person in the u.s 
Like you think everything just goes to shit completely? Yeah. I think he controls the stock market to where if he does that, if he liquidates every all of his assets and gives a million dollars to everyone on, let's say he gives a million dollars to everyone <laughs> in the USA, which there's around 325 million people. Yeah. So he's given away three hundred and twenty-five million dollars. Right. He still has seven hundred million dollars left. Let's say for that billion, mm-hmm. he's only given away like I don't know, three fourths. No, no, one fourth mm-hmm. of his money. Mm-hmm. Let's say on average, he gives everyone a million dollars. There's gonna be people that are gonna you know buy a million dollar house and not be able to afford the maintenance on it. Ooh. And then there's gonna be people that buy neighborhoods and monopolize a certain city and then there's going to be people that are literally just going to buy like a car and call it a day you know and then there's going to be people that are going to want to invest it back into the market and which is what was supposed to happen with the stimulus check yeah we were supposed to we were supposed to plug it back into the market and i think (laughs) i think what happened was most of the stimulus check either went towards like ordering online and you know and taking trips mm-hmm. and we lost a lot of money but i think the stimulus check created the inflation where that we're going through right now yeah bro for sure that shit was fucking horrible i mean it was cool yeah you know like dude what the fuck like the government just sent me a thousand bucks like what? Yeah. Well, how much was it yeah it was like 1200 1, 1200 right? 1200 it was two 1200 dollar ones and then 600 and then if you had a kid it was 800 for each kid jesus fucking christ so at that point it was cool it was cool bro but then look at the gas prices right now but look at look at yeah i think gas prices are are going up because the price is controlled by the entities that are selling the gas to the gas stations and they're controlling the price uh-huh. if the government were to subsidize the, subsidize the price they could probably bring it down to like at least two dollars, two fifty. But right now it's expensive, but it's not costing any more to bring in the barrels. And saying, production yeah. hasn't lowered. Mm-mm. So it's literally just the companies raising the prices. Yeah. It's but, like I don't know, bro. That shit is like at the end of the day, everything just comes out to people making money on on shit like raising the prices on gas. Yeah. I don't think it I mean, I don't know. Do you think it contributes to the inflation that we that we're going through right now? I don't know. I don't know either. I'm not an economist. I think I, I I like to read a lot about like where we're at in an economy, and I like to be aware of what we're going through. Mm-hmm. But we're not gonna be able to fix Hell no. anything. I don't think I don't think it's up to us to fix anything. I think it's literally the upper class that needs to take care of this. We got. One minute, we're going to take a short pause, and we'll be right back. All right, we're back after a short pause. But yeah, bro, you know what does scare me what? about the economy and where we're at in the in the U.S.? I think if you go back in time, yeah, every empire, every government, every time that a country has been in power, it usually only lasts between 200 and 300 years. Jesus fucking Christ. And <laughs> That's a lot of time. That's a lifetime. 200 and 300 years is, is a pretty long time because yeah. re- let's say we're only here for 100 years you know mm. that's two more persons two yeah. more generations than me so the u.s is reaching up there like you know 1776 was you know almost 300 years ago so could we see maybe like a shift into like where another country controls the market the way the u.s does Nah, I think I think the US is too fucking powerful. powerful and I don't think I mean I you, know, you see that happening, bro? I don't see that shit happening. The only other country would be China. China Yeah, dude, honestly. They have so much people. And that's the thing that like man, this is <laughs> this is probably like a fucking like yeah. radical ass idea. But I feel like we should have mandatory military time for everyone yeah As, like every citizen of the u.s should fucking go to the military for at least one year for what though dude it would like eliminate a bunch of bullshit like you, don't you think like I, th- I feel like people will be more patriotic i feel like people will be more leaning into like helping each other yeah. out instead of being so fucking divided 
bro. Yeah, there's a lot of. Not, yeah. I agree with that, but I don't. I, I think. I think being patriotic. It's gonna put a band aid, over, how much. Division. How like how divided we are as a country. Mm-hmm. I I don't think being patriotic is the answer, but. I think being patriotic is what made the U.S. strong after 9-11. Yeah. But I don't think, right, like, let's say 9-11 were to happen right now. There would be a group of people that would be like, it didn't happen. Right. And then there'd be another group of people that would be like, all right, let's go kick that country's ass. And, there's gonna and then there's like- going to be a third group that's going to be like, no, it's okay. Karma will get them. You know, and then they'll go back to reading horoscopes. But I don't think being patriotic we're so divided mm-hmm. that some people aren't going to stand for what the U.S. believes in unless it represents their own beliefs. Right. But I think that's being so selfish of your thoughts that you have to be patriotic for your country to succeed. Because if the U.S. does, does good, you're doing good. And people don't get that. People think like, oh, fuck the U.S. government. Oh, fuck the U.S. You know, like, this is your home. As much as you don't like it, you don't want to see someone not succeed, which is why I don't get why people are like, fuck Joe Biden or fuck Donald Trump. He's your president. You might not share the same opinions as them, but you don't want someone to fail that's governing your whole ass country. You you want to see people succeed. Now, did I want to see Donald Trump succeed with deporting every illegal (laughs) alien? No, because... You know, immigrants run this country. They don't necessarily run political offices or they don't necessarily run for government or anything. But I think immigrants are kind of like that backbone. They're a part of the vertebrate that holds up it's the, the back U.S. Of the U.S. Yeah, because they do a lot that we don't know about. And they do it a lot of jobs that someone that works in an office like myself does not want to do. Mm. You know, you... You couldn't be able. You couldn't pay me thirty dollars to work in a vegetable field picking out potatoes or whatever. You know, you like I can't. I literally can't. I'm allergic to half of the fucking world. I would literally die out yeah. there. You know, like a bee stings me and that's it for me. I'm I'm dead. You <laughs> You're know? done. Yeah, I'm done. I wouldn't. You know, they they have a lot of jobs and not necessarily like in the field. They do a lot of like restaurants and they do a lot of work. Yeah. That we don't want to do so we have to be grateful for that part mm-hmm. you know do i do i want to see biden i don't know what does he want to do that people don't like do i want to see him do more gun control i mean yeah i don't think people should have ar-45s but if you want one you should be able to get one but i don't think you, it should be to the point where like if i've been having like bad thoughts yeah i don't think i should be able to buy one because a no one should take their life away Mm-hmm. Right, you should be able to work through that, and I think our main concern shouldn't be gun control; it should be mental health issue. For sure, you know, I feel like a lot of the shooters happen because they're in a dark spot, and that's not me being empathetic with them or sympathizing with them. I think it's more of like, uh, you know, mental health can really bring you down, and we should offer more help for that. Gun control is a gray area, you know. Like, I don't think people should own grenades. Yeah, you know, like just a little too crazy. Yeah, that's a little too crazy. But light launcher for yeah, but I wouldn't want to see someone fail. I mean, it's funny whenever like you know Joe Biden falls, (laughs) or whenever (laughs) Biden, or whenever sorry Trump was like walking down those steps, super weird. You know, Uh like that's funny, but you're just gonna laugh and that's it. Like nobody should want anybody else to fail. No, I feel that too, bro. And that was uh. That's something that I have a conflict with with people that are like constantly hating on somebody for doing something. I was like, bro, like, how does that affect you? Like, you should like gear towards that and like, oh, dude, like, look what he's doing. I don't know, bro. I have yeah. I have an issue with people that think that way. Like, yeah, when they see someone successful and they like try to shit on them yeah. because they're successful. Well, you only you don't ever see anybody talk shit downwards. You know, it's always upwards. You don't talk shit to someone that's down. You talk shit up, you know? Mm-hmm. 
you don't talk bad to someone that's doing bad. You talk bad to someone that's doing good. Good. Yeah. Most of the time, people hate because you're doing something good, mm. or they're doing something that other people you aren't doing. Yeah. Do. You know, like when we were doing uncut gym, mm. and I was, and people would kind of like say, like, "Oh, bro, you're doing a podcast." Like, it's like, yeah, I'm doing a podcast. Like, I'm sure you want to do one too, but you're not. You know. You have people like. like Telling you, like, why the fuck are you doing this podcast? Like yeah, that? and it's like, oh, bro, crazy. because I want one. You know, like, yeah, we live in in the world. We live in a world. Yeah. We live in a world. <laughs> <laughs> we live in a time where you can like this. Imagine trying to pull this off in the sixties, dude. You that's... kidding? You wouldn't be able to. You would literally need to go to a radio show and apply for a job. And there's there would be like a hundred thousand more applications and people more qualified than you. People here, like yeah, yeah, people would get keep. Yeah, here it's like you buy two mics off of Amazon, a camera, and you upload it to YouTube, and that's your show. There's no yeah. production behind it besides ourselves. Right. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. That's really crazy. Yeah, you, you wouldn't be able to do this. No, nah, hell, any no. other time and place. Nah, dude. No, I. That's why I don't like when people say, "Oh, I wish I would have been born in the '60s or the '90s." No, you don't. We live so comfortable. We live in a very comfortable time. Now it's not the perfect time and we can fix it. And I think it's up to our generation to fix whatever is wrong in in our opinions. But I think we need to work that as a collective and we need to unite, not necessarily be patriotic. I think patriotism fades into being proud. Mm -hmm. But being patriotic is kind of... Weird because you didn't choose to be born in the USA or you didn't choose where you were born, you know, Mm -hmm. you were placed there because your parents had sex, you know, (laughs) yeah. like I'm from Mexico and I'm super patriotic about being from Mexico. Yeah. But it's also kind of like I'm in the US, you know, Mm -hmm. and I'm proud to live here. Mm -hmm. I'm never not going to be proud to be a US resident that's that's who i am that's part of my identity Identity, yeah and it's kind of like well i'm from mexico too and that's my identity too you know like that's who i am as a person but being patriotic is like looking at it from an outside view in Mm -hmm. because i'm not very patriotic i'm not super patriotic when it comes to being mexican and i'm not super patriotic when it comes to living in the u.s yeah i'm in the same boat i'm in i'm just in the middle i'm i'm outside looking in and it feels weird because it's like you didn't choose to be born here. You were you were blessed to be born here. Honestly. Yeah, because we live in a very, very nice country. Dude, uh, us, both of us having kind of like the same background when yeah. it comes to the immigration topic. Not immigration, but like migrating yeah. to the U.S., not yeah. being or it wasn't or, or uh, option, right? Yeah. It's not like we're like, oh, we're going go to go. How old were you? When you came to the U.S.? 14. 14. I yeah. was six and a half. No. So you, you, you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I had no word. Did, so let me ask you this. Sorry. Yeah, you good. Did your parents ask you, like, do you want to go live in the U.S.? I remember, like, I mean, it wasn't like a question. It was more like a oh, statement. This is going to happen. Oh. Uh-huh. What do you were, think? What did I think? Yeah. Well, back then I was like really like into skateboarding. Yeah. And then. I'm from Juarez, right? Yeah. Chihuahua Juarez. So it was like a border uh, state. Yeah. Um, so I was always uh, I was always intrigued. I was a skateboarder, so I would skate a lot. And I was always intrigued by the people like doing content in the US. Yeah. So like I thought it was gonna be cool. Like I was like, oh hell yeah, bro, there's gonna be fucking like that was my mentality, yeah. bro. I was fucking 14 years old, you know. I didn't know shit. Yeah. I didn't know all that shit that was gonna happen. So uh yeah, I, I thought it was going to be a cool experience. And then I came here and I was like, dude, this fucking sucks. Like, I left my friends. And more important, I left my friends. I left my family. My family. But then more important, like something that I wasn't aware of, it was that I didn't know that my fucking identity was going to be a split, bro. Like, I yeah. was literally in those years of development where I was like forming a personality for myself, you know? Yeah. I was a teenager. You know, when you're a teenager, yeah, you're going bro, you're just, through you're, changes. You're, you're forming your personality, the person yeah. that you're going to be for the rest of your life. So I have to, uh, yeah, dude, I struggle with like 
finding an identity because I was like, I don't. You were you were that kid that wore Pumas. Hell no, I never wore Pumas. <laughs> <I'm> kidding. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Those fucking Adidas. But, yeah. Nah, nah, hell no. Nah. No, it's. I think it's different because you already had you already knew who you were at fourteen. Not that you knew exactly who you were, but you already had an identity and you had a personality. Yeah. I was six and a half. I I yeah. didn't know. I remember my parents asked me if I wanted to go live in the U.S. Mm-hmm. I mean, I vaguely remember, and I remember that they sent me and my sister down. And I remember I said yes because yeah. I didn't know what was going on. I thought we were gonna go. I don't know, too late vacation. Yeah, vacation. Yeah, come back. Yeah. yeah. I always, I think when I went to elementary school, mm-hmm. I really enjoyed elementary school in Mexico. And I remember I had friends. And I remember we used to play soccer during recess. Mm-hmm. And my mom would bring me lunch during our recess. Right. Right. I remember that. Yeah, that, those are yeah. some good memories. And I remember we used to walk to school because I lived in an apartment and it was down. Like you would literally go down the apartment and then you turn right and then you turn left. And this, the elementary school was there. So it was super cool. And... I remember that I went to to school with another with like two other kids and they were kind of my friends. I don't even remember their names, but I I remember this. And when we yeah. came over here, I met Stephanie, who's my wife now, and she taught me English and she this was first grade. It was oh, second shit. semester of first grade. She taught me English and she helped me out a lot. She actually still kind of holds, holds a grudge towards me because they would take her recess away to give me more time. Oh, hey, I don't know. Yeah, but <laughs> I remember, I remember Damn. I was very sentimental uh-huh. the whole school year. Yeah. Because I remember I would want to walk into the classroom yeah. and see all all my friends from Mexico in there. Oh, word. And I remember I wanted to see my teacher in there. And it's kind of like heartbreaking as a kid walking in. And, you know, you're a six, seven, and you're barely making friends. And then they, you're in a country where you don't even speak the language. Mm. But I picked up English pretty fast. Yeah. Because I was seven. And then by second grade, I kind of had more friends. Third grade was really hard because that's whenever you start reading more. And I remember I struggled with reading more than with talking mm-hmm. and having conversations. But then after that, like, you kind of forget that you weren't from here and i remember it kind of hit me during high school yeah i never forget i never i could never forget bro and it's something that yeah. like that always fucked me up because mm-hmm. i always wanted like i always feel i always felt like the outsider you know yeah well yeah you were always i think being an immigrant you're always an outsider <laughs> uh-huh. and you forget there's days where you forget that you're an outsider and then something happens and you they pop you back into reality yeah. and you're like oh no oh, you're shit. not from here no, no, yeah you're not from here yep. which is kind of weird because then there's you have mexican americans that fit into america so good mm-hmm. you know you have like first generation kids that they don't know they're their parents aren't from here and they kind of blend in more. And you can tell, like you can tell the difference between us yeah, and someone that is first generation. They, they think differently. They talk differently. They have a different way of looking at things and mm. they, they did different things in high school than we did, you know? Elaborate. Yeah. No, I like elaborate. So like, I think they look I don't think they realized that they were born with an opportunity as soon as they were born in the U.S. And for me and you, it was different. Like oh, yeah, I had a big a, factor. Yeah, I, we had to put in some work to get where we're at. Yeah. Or we we always have a thought that if we don't work harder than the next person, someone's gonna come in and replace us. That immigrant mentality. Yeah, it's that immigrant mentality that if if I don't do it faster than the person next to me, I'm gonna get replaced. I'm gonna get quick. replaced real quick, and it doesn't like. You never have a sense of security. You always feel insecure. Isn't that weird that nobody yeah. teaches that shit? Like it's yeah. just kind of built in, huh? You know what I remember from high school? Yeah. I remember there was a teacher right. that said, if you're bilingual, you can't oh. think in two <laughs> languages. Yeah, I remember that. And I remember I used to be like, first of all, you're not bilingual. Yeah. 
you know, mm-hmm. if you learn Spanish in college, no, you, don't, you don't know what it's like to think in Spanish and talk in English mm-hmm. or to think in English and talk in Spanish. Right. They don't know what it's like. So nobody can tell me that I can't think in English or Spanish. Mm-hmm. I think in both languages and that's who I am. You know, that maybe if I learn Italian, I'll I'll think about it in Spanish and translate it to Italian. And I get where, what he's saying. But I don't like that they try to put everyone in a box, you know? Yeah. It's not fair. It's not fair to us. It's not fair to anyone else, you know? It's it's really it's really hard mm-hmm. to try and fit in because you feel like you have to be more uh, – you're trying to be more of a people pleaser. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, you're just trying to like – Get in, like, do the same things that, that the crowd that you hang out with does, yeah. even though that's not your personality. Yeah. And that's the shit that I, dude, I struggle with that shit since, like, for for a long time. Not even, like, for, like, um, I feel like I'm just now, just now starting to develop, like, oh, okay, this yeah. is who I am. This is what I believe in. Yeah. This is my personality. Like, I'm just, just now at 26, I'm like, Okay, this is my identity. Yeah. That shit was hard, bro. And I never like realized and I feel like it's it slowed me down from doing a lot of shit. Yeah. And I feel like that's something that a lot of children of Ameri- of immigrants go through. You know, like you want to be Mexican for your parents and you're trying to show them that you're really Mexican, but then yeah. you're also trying to be as American as possible for your friends. Yeah. You know, it's really hard, is, right? but I think you have to be proud of where you're from. You know, like you have to represent, you know, like we're not all the same mm-hmm. and we, you have to educate people and let them know, like, you know, like Mexico has a, a lot to offer and as Mexicans or Mexican Americans or second generation, first generation, we still have a lot to offer, you know, like eventually we're going to blend in. I feel like, you know, like mm. right right now, you don't really know when you look at a white person, you're not like, oh, you're Irish or you're German. Oh, right. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, they yeah. just kind of blend in. They know where they where their roots come from, mm. but they're not distinguished or divided, you know, mm. and I feel like eventually we'll blend into the population. That's just going to take some time, though. Yeah, it's not going to be overnight. Yeah, it's not gonna be like next year or two years from now. It will probably be like thirty, forty years from now. But it's hard. It's hard. It's not easy. Mm-hmm. You know, like you. I think you learn to be more grateful of every opportunity you're given. For sure. Like yeah. you just take that shit, like, and you take it and run with it. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you don't take advantage of the opportunities that are given to you. Somebody else is going to take them away from you. That's something I learned too, bro. And like, it's kind of hard, like, especially because I come from a family that is like really bonded. Yeah. You know? Like, don't leave nobody behind. Yeah. But I'm just. It's hard. No, bro. Sometimes you just got to do what's going to. is. Good. I mean, hey, I love my parents and I love everybody. Yeah. And I'm not saying I'm, I, will, I will never leave everybody behind. Right. But at the same time, like, you just got to take those opportunities and. You just gotta do them. what's best for you. Sometimes. Yeah, you that shit was hard leave. for me too, bro. Yeah, it's hard. I think it was it was kind of hard for me to leave construction because I was already making good money, mm-hmm. but I always had like this feeling, and my parents never directly told me, and my dad never like told me. But I think they always wanted me to be here so that I could, uh, so I didn't have to do what they had to do. Yeah, and I not put myself in like physical pain by the time I'm 50. Mm -hmm. So I think that pushed me a lot, but then there's times where like, you know, that's what you love to do. And that's what you do. You know, like I'm not, I think working construction is the coolest thing ever. Honestly, like the satisfaction you get after you get a job done and see the thing you worked on come into fruition and, and see it done. And, and walk it and be like, oh, I did this with my hands. It's so gratifying. <laughs> when you pass by the highway. Look, yeah. kids up. <laughs> yeah, that's me. I remember when I worked construction and I did trim carpentry, which is like probably one of the easiest traits you can do in construction. It's not hard or it's not 
as physically demanding as roofing or tile or driveways or whatever. Yeah. But I remember I used to take Stephanie to like the houses <laughs> I did, and I'd be like, "Look, I did that," you know, like all <laughs> stupid. <laughs> yeah, or take pictures and send them to your friends. Like, look what I did. You I know? know, like it's a different feeling, yeah. and it's a feeling that I don't, I don't get working in an office environment. Like, y- yeah, I get done through like a stack of paperwork, and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm done. You know, like, mm. but it's not as gratifying as like, oh, look, look what I did. You know, like it's weird. It's a weird feeling, but I, I loved it. It was really cool, but. You know they don't offer insurances <laughs> no, <laughs> or break no. time off. <laughs> no, bro, you're 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 setting yourself for a good future, and like that's just it. Just comes back to taking opportunities. That's an opportunity that was presented to you, and like it was I a good thing it. that you ran with it. Yeah, it's cool. Oh, I yeah, like bro. it. I like it. It's cool. It's I true. think it's uh, yeah. But going back to it, if you could go back, mm-hmm. and you're 14 years old, and let's say your parents were like, all right. You decide. Do we stay or do we go? I'm fucking staying, baby. I'm not fucking living. <laughs> yeah, no, bro. I'm never leaving. Are you crazy? You're staying in Mexico? No, hell no. No? No, bro. Because the part of Mexico where I come from, like going back to your, your product of your environment, I was already hanging out with the homies from the block, you know? Like they yeah. was doing some bad shit. Yeah. And I was already, I got robbed um, by a knife and I... Yeah, by a gun, you know, and I was already seeing people like started smoking. The homies was tagging. Um, it was getting it, into yeah. fights. Just you like, don't think you you don't think like you would have the same work ethic had you stayed? Fuck no, no, hell no, bro. I would have had a you would have started like slinging a, a factory. Yeah, I would have worked at a factory like you know las maquilas. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. like Ciudad Juarez. Yeah, Chihuahua is like a all the uh all the US companies came to Mexico cuz the labor is cheaper, right? right? So like Juarez is like a big city for that. So there's a uh, Mitsubishi fucking Mercy. you know yeah, Toyota, people that make IKEA shit. Like yeah. all that is there and like 90% of the people that work there that live there, they work for those companies. And uh, yeah, you know, so it's You not- would just be another factory worker I would, another employee yeah i would have been bro because that's not I, I mean i don't know it, i might be wrong but i don't see a lot of potential for entrepreneurs in the mexico. part of mexico yeah. that i'm from yeah at least in my state yeah and i love it i love i love the culture i love everything that surrounds it because it's like you know it's a, it's a cool city bro but it's like Just, have think, you been back Nah, I haven't been no. back. I'm going, hope like maybe in like two or three weeks. Let me tell you, bro. The feeling you get. All right. First of all, if you're flying, are you flying? Yeah. For okay. Sure. If you fly, you get into the airport, and as soon as you get off, you get well. At least in my experience, I got so much emotion built up in me. Yeah. Like, oh my god, this is where I'm from. Oh yeah. You're like, oh my god, I'm gonna see the house I left. Yeah. Right, like, oh my God, I'm gonna see the streets I grew up in for one till I was six. Mm-hmm. You it's like going back to it's like going back home that's not your home anymore. It's like going back in time. It's kind of like time traveling. Or no, it's not time traveling, but you're going back in time. It's like you're you're unlocking a part of your memories that you didn't know you had. Oh yeah, yeah. When, like your dad tells you something and be like, "Oh shit, yeah, I yeah, remember yeah. that," but I never thought about it. Like that yeah. kind of shit. I've gone back to Monterrey three times mm-hmm. in the last two years, yeah. and every time I go back, I understand my parents better, mm-hmm. why they did the things they did. I understand myself better, and I remember more things from when I was younger. I'm like, oh, okay, I remember this. And I've also met people that, like, your parents talk to your parents, and it's like, and it's cool to put, like, names to faces. Mm-hmm. But going back, like, if I'm six and a half, seven, and my parents are telling me, like, you know, like, do you want to go or you want to stay? I would say go, like, live here in Oklahoma. But I would definitely be intrigued, and I would want to meet that Max that stayed back. Oh, it would yeah. be so cool if you could meet that person that stayed back. Say you, you're... Say you're you have a computer and you can look look yourself up in the in an alternate universe, yeah. and you're looking at the Edgar that stayed in Juarez, and he's twenty seven, twenty six now. 
He's 26, and you're looking at the Edgar that stayed in Mexico. I'll probably be disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying, bro. It's like, yeah, I don't know, man. It just, it just seems. I mean, at least in my opinion, it just seems really hard to make it. Like, yeah. And the other, I mean, I Mexico, get what you're saying, yeah. though. I, I understand what you're saying, and yeah. yes, I would like to see it. That would be cool. Like, a, it'd be like mind blowing. There's not a lot of racks to riches stories in Mexico, not like the U.S. You could no. be, you could be born in the lower class here, and then fucking and be it. really good at something mm-hmm. and die in the upper class. In For Mexico, sure. you have to be born in the middle class, stay in the middle class. And just scrape the top of the upper class, and oh. then your kids are going to be in the upper class. At least that's yeah, from, at least from, from our outside too. looking in. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. like you don't hear a lot of people that are like, "Oh, I made it." You know, I I come from here, and now I'm here. But, I literally don't know anybody from my hometown. Yeah, with the story like that. Yeah, nah. Besides, like music artist and yeah, things like that, but like people you know? that I know, yeah. you know, or people that were around me. Yeah. It's no. hard. It, it's really, really hard. I bet it is, man. Yeah. It looks hard. <laughs> yeah. It looks like, hard as shit. I, I mean, feel it, like it's hard here. Yeah. I feel like but. I probably, I like to think that I would, I, if I were to look up the alternate universe, Max, and I stayed in Mexico, mm. I, like, I would like to think that I went to school and have a good career. You know? Because mm. it's like, I, I was. No, but it'd be cool because, like, College yeah. in Mexico, I feel like, is way better than college. Oh, here. yeah, because like, they actually send you to what you're going to be doing. Right. They make you work in what you're going to be working at. Mm-hmm. You know, like you go to high school and then in high school, I think you already start your career. And then you go to whatever college you want to work in. And then in college, they make you reach out to companies and yeah, yeah, you, ask, start doing yeah. Job for them. you start doing like internships i would have loved to do that i shit. would yeah i, I think education for that education is really expensive in mexico but then too. I, yeah that's what i'm saying bro yeah. if you don't come from a middle class but like see here's the thing like i was in the middle class in mexico so i feel like i would have probably scraped the upper class yeah i would like to think i don't know i don't know who that's knows what i'm saying because yeah. i, I feel know. like if you don't have it because there is not there's no like can you borrow money to go to Mexico to go to school in Mexico? Like yeah, it's like can? here. Yeah, that's the sure. thing. Yeah, they I mean, yeah. they have to have payment plans. So you just have to have you just have to be ambitious. Yeah, but I remember you pay to go to high school, bro. Yeah, you pay to go to school. high school. Yeah, it's and, crazy. And they don't have public school. Well, they have public schools, but they suck ass. And you gotta pay to yeah, go. You gotta every, pay to every go. fucking semester. semester. Yeah. Not every year, and you gotta pay for the uniform. Oh yeah, uniforms would have been whack. Uniforms would have been whack as hell. But, but I was it's also cool. That shit, yeah. RBD style. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. We're back. We have to do 30 minute intervals. I know. Yeah, hey, this is our first it. podcast, bro. We'll get more. Yeah. Yeah. We're rusty. The contest but... will still come out, but yeah. We're just. We just need to get our equipment right. Yeah, we could talk for hours though, which is crazy. Honestly, yeah. yeah. Especially because we haven't seen each other like that much. The last time yeah. I seen you was what, like a month ago. Oh, we talk a every bit day, over. but yeah, we, we don't get to have this. I don't, yeah, texting and talking are two different things, though. Yeah. You made me a better texter, bro. Yeah, I used to hate texts. I'd be uh, like, oh, I'm just gonna fucking call you. Why? Why did you hate texting? Just because you didn't like to type it out, or what? I don't even know. Like, I guess it's just like. I was too. I don't know. I would guess you, I didn't have like enough. Would uh, you rather what top? Wait, wait, what? <laughs> would you rather what top? What up? Yeah. Oh shit. Nah, nah. I use that shit every day though. What up? Yeah. Why? For my my family. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. It's crazy that they don't use the message app. Nah, they don't. It's really weird. I would be Facetime my grandma and shit through what up? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. My grandma has an iPhone, and she'll still face me through the WhatsApp app <laughs> what the instead fuck? of the iPhone, <laughs> yeah. which is weird. But it's like, yeah, I guess. But going back to it, I feel like, do you have cousins in Mexico? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the best comparison or what you can compare yourself to is your cousins because they kind of grew up in the environment, you know. Nah. No. Nah. No. Nah. Because uh, I feel like my dad was really like strict. Yeah. Like yeah. He, he, I think he saw like 
the bad. Yeah, the bad, and he didn't. The like good, it. the bad, and the ugly, and he was like, "Nah, I'm really." Mm. Yeah, when the bad, because he be talking yeah. shit about my cousins, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I, I Dude, fuck with my cousins, yeah, though. but yeah. Now I look at my cousins like, and I've got to, you know, socialize with them more. The first time I went, I really just stayed with my grandparents, mm-hmm. and I was kind of still shy. But this last two times, I've talked to my cousins more. And one of my cousins is a call center supervisor, which yeah. is the same job that I have here. Yeah. Or I had here, which mm-hmm. is weird. You know, like, oh, we both ended up in the same position. Oh, that is crazy. Position. So yeah. it's weird. Yeah, obviously, he does. He didn't make what I make here, but he yeah. makes good money for in Mexico. Him in Mexico. Yeah. You know, like, that's crazy. And my grandma likes to say that she, I remind him of a lot and he reminds her of me you know like yeah. we're kind of like the same the same we're both funny and we like to joke around a lot and he's really creative he he longboards and he does longboarding contest this is the one i met no no okay. no, no no and then uh i have another one and he's an uber driver mm-hmm. which is like not bad yeah but he's uber driving to put himself through school uh, so he's not just an Uber driver. He's only 18. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then my other cousin that I don't really talk to a lot because he works a lot. He's a bar. He's a barber. A barber? Yeah. yeah. Which is cool. You know? Yeah. And then. Damn, yeah. They got yeah. like the same shit that we got going on here. Yeah. And then my other cousin, she is a retail worker at a. Like they sell lights. Mm hmm like chandeliers lamps and all that that's what she does and but she has a radio show no shit yeah she she'll interview like some of her friends that are doing cool things yeah but they'll play music in the background no in between the conversation oh okay okay. like they'll be like oh why'd you pick this song oh well this song reminds me of this this and that and they're like okay let's listen to a song and then they'll play the song and they'll after the song They'll talk like, oh, well, I, I like this song because, you know, that's cool. It was playing on the first date I had with my girlfriend or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, which is like, oh, that's weird because, like, podcasting is basically podcasting. But Damn. what sucks is, like, it's not recorded. So you have to listen to it live and then it's gone. Uh, but then yeah. it's also really cool. Yeah. But I was like, looking at her numbers through, like, the app that you have to listen through. And she had, like, 60, 70 listeners, like, active listeners. Oh damn! Yeah, for a live that's stream? crazy. Yeah, for a live stream, that's kind of crazy. Yeah, like it's not like a hundred thousand, but seventy people taking time out of their day to listen to you. Oh, I'll be so grateful, bro. Yeah, that's that's really cool. Yeah, especially when you know, like, when you're a content creator. Yeah, and you know how like hard it is to reach audience. Yeah, you're like, uh. but and then the other cousin, he's a physical therapist. Mm-hmm. Physical therapist, bro. Like, we have those here too. It's yeah. crazy. It's really like, and then I put myself in in that spot, and I'm like, oh, maybe I would have done something cool here too. If I had to live in Mexico, if I had to like, like, yeah, like back in the day, say I would get like deported and I would go to Mexico, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, this shit, it was a possibility. Yeah, yeah. Bro. it still is. Well, not anymore. Well, no, it'll be really hard, but it could happen. You think so? Fuck no, ain't nobody uh, kicking me out. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Nah, bro, no. can't. I'm I'm set now. Think so. It could happen. Think so? No, <laughs> no way. I'm kidding, no, bro. Fuck around, bro. You gotta be scared. <laughs> nah, bro. If I had to go back to Mexico, I wouldn't stay in Chihuahua, bro. No, I'll go to um like another state, like something that's like because we started uh, listening. Uh, we started listening to Mexican content, right? Like a lot, right? Yeah, like, that's ninety percent of the shit that we're listening to. Yeah. Yeah. And like that shit opened my eyes on like how how fucking different like yeah every state is. So I would go to one of those states. Yeah. Cause yeah. I would stay in Monterrey. Yeah, bro, yeah. cause that's a cool ass city. <laughs> it like, is a cool Monterrey ass city. Monterrey is like is the shit. It is. It's like fucking South Texas. It, yeah, it's like it's like you're in San Antonio. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. I what I went to San Antonio. The fucking highways. When you sent me that picture, I was like, holy shit, bro. This is the U.S. <laughs> yeah. What is this? You know what's crazy is that they'll pick up that you know English and they'll talk to you in English. And I'm yeah. like, whoa, 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 hold on. Like, I came here to practice my Spanish, girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. But, like, I know, like, 
my cousin that has the radio show, yeah, she talks English yeah. and she'll talk to me in English. It's not perfect English, mm. but for Mexico standards, you could get a good ass job with that English, you know, which I'm guessing is how she got that job. But it's cool. See, I wish Juarez was more like that. And I don't know why it's not, bro. It's like literally right, right on the next border. to Texas. Yeah. It's on the other side of Texas, but like, bro, like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, why is it not like that? Yeah. I'm it's... just shitting on fucking my hometown. This <laughs> podcast, but like, hey, bro. Uh, Monterrey is the same time. So we're seven and a half hours from San Antonio. Right. And Monterrey, seven and a half hours from Monterrey. San Antonio is seven and a half hours from Monterrey. Mm-hmm. So it's weird that they're so similar. Mm hmm. Yeah, they're similar. And different at the same time. We have a river walk that is just as big as the river walk in San Antonio. Mm-hmm. It's just as long. It's really, really nice. It's newer. It's probably like 10 years old. But they'll dye the water to make it super blue. Oh, yeah. It's so really crazy. Cool. Yeah, it looks really cool. And the one in San Antonio is clear and you can see the bottom, which is still cool. And then, uh, yeah, the city is really, it's really big. It's yeah. really, really big. Mm-hmm. It's super big. And there's a lot of festivals. While I was there the last time, there was a festival there mm-hmm. that was happening. And you could literally listen to the music if you were outside. Pal Norte? No, it was Machaca. <laughs> well, what? Machaca. Machaca? Yeah. It was really cool. Uh, Osuna was there. Really? Yeah. What the fuck? It was cool. You could literally step outside the apartment that and... I stayed at and listen to the music. It was really cool. Damn, that does sound cool. Yeah, we we romanticize that shit because you're from there, and I and I see I, I see it. So it's like, yeah. no, it's definitely like I I caught my my mom caught me being a white skin. Uh huh. Because I <laughs> while I was over there, I was uh, looking up like flights <laughs> to like Cabo and Playa Rivera and you know Cancun. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh, it's only fifty like it's only fifty dollars. <laughs> oh, then, like my, Yeah, it's like, only fifty dollars to fly from Monterrey to Cabo or yeah. Monterrey to Playa Rivera. And I remember I came back and I told my mom, I don't know why people don't go. It's only fifty dollars. And yeah. then my mom sent me like a TikTok and she was like, watch this. And the girl explains like if you're if you're uh if you're a white skin, which uh-huh. a white skin is someone with privilege in Mexico, it's not like like a white person trying to be mexican it's no literally, it's a mexican it's a mexican that's born with privilege in mexico right yeah yeah. and it's how they refer to a lot of rich people in mexico yeah. but <laughs> i said that and my mom sent me a video and she was like because the average <laughs> mexican doesn't make more than a uh, hundred dollars a month so they can't afford a fifty dollar yeah that's ticket. a lot bro <laughs> so i was caught i was caught being a white white skin yeah which is funny but we definitely romanticize it. Like, people don't make the money we make here. No. Nah. People make, like, you know, like, a good salary is, like, $500. $500 a month? A month is Jeez. a good salary over there. I mean, but it's, like, it, it balances out, right? Yeah. Everything's really The same cheap. shit, bro. It's just, it's, just, it's just a different currency. Yeah. Yeah. It, well, no, because not everybody has a $500 salary job. Oh, that's right. Yeah which is really hard. But when I go over there, it's like... Like I'm maybe in a fucking white city. Yeah. <laughs> and when I go over there, it's like... Everything is kind of cheap to me, but mm. I can't say it because I don't want to sound rude, you know? Mm. And it's like... Like, if you were to convert my salary or the salary that my household makes to pesos... You'd be rich as fuck. I'd be a millionaire in Mexico. You'd be a millionaire? Yeah. Damn. If you make... like, If you make $4,000 a month. So my mom did a calculation recently because we were... Like, I was thinking... I wanted to live over there for like two months. I think it would be cool. And we did the math. Uh With $2,000, you could live three months in Mexico. With $2,000? Yeah. You could live three months. Groceries, utilities, everything. Yeah, but you can't find two months to just leave. Yeah, no. Fuck no. No. It'd be crazy though. Yeah. But yeah, I was caught I was caught being a white skin. <laughs> Which is funny, but when yeah. when I'm over there, it's like, you know, like my family's not 
poor, you know, thank God. But And it's not like I, like, I think people think that I go to Mexico and I stay somewhere where they have, like, dirt for a floor. And mm-hmm. it's like, no, like, I live, I in stayed in an apartment. Yeah, I live in a big-ass city. It's a city, bro. Yeah, it's a big-ass city. I'm not in the rancho. No. <laughs> Which, ranchos over there are so cool, too. You know? right. Yeah, I went to a town. So over there, they literally make Pueblos Magicos, which is like a town that's historic. So they maintain it historic, and they call it Pueblos Magicos, mm. which is really cool. And I went to Santiago, mm-hmm. and we passed by some ranches, some ranches, and the ranches look so cool. You know, they look really, really well maintained and really pretty. And Santiago was such a cool city. Everything is like you see like. Spanish influenced buildings, and then mm. you see cathedrals, like big ass churches, mm. and they're really, really nice. And then, like, everybody's just walking everywhere. That's why I love Mexico so much. Mm. You can walk anywhere, anywhere, bro. Oh, yeah, where, yeah, at least where I stay at. I'm sure Juarez is the same way. Oh, yeah, People walk it's... everywhere, yeah. yeah. Okay, so like, where I stay at, you walk, you cross the main street. Mm. And you're already in like El Santa Lucia, or you cross the street and you're estás en el barrio antiguo, you know, like, <laughs> and you have like things to do there. Like, there's a library, there's the ah, coffee yeah, shop, yeah, there's yeah. tacos, mm. there's the grocery store, you know, like you cross the street and you're you I can mean, eat tacos. It might so be cool. the same way here, like in some states, cities, not yeah, here. not in Oklahoma. You have to drive everywhere. I live close to the city, and, you gotta and I still have to drive to the city. Yeah, you know, it, which is crazy, and the malls over there are really cool because people over there still go to the malls. Here, malls are kind of dying. Yeah, bro. Like, yeah, like, I was at the mall yesterday. You didn't like it? I was just trying to get out of there. Yeah. Yeah. You don't like it at all? Nah, bro. It's like I was so sh- I was caffeinated as fuck too, so I was feeling a little anxious. Oh. And it was like all these kids just playing around, like teenagers. Yeah, I think the mall is more for like teenagers right kids to fuck around in you know yeah yeah i remember going to the mall with your friends was the shit yeah. yeah like friday night yeah just got out of the mall you watch a movie and shit yeah yeah you so my friday nights consisted of going to breaktown going to harkins and then walking to breaktown and then you compare uh like you compare that to a night out now and it's like oh we still kind of do the same you know Mm. but I, me and stephanie still do the same but yeah it's it's the mall is not what it used to be the stores are kind of empty now and you kind of have to order everything online yeah everything's online i think the quail springs mall is kind of cool yeah the one like in that? Mm-hmm. it's not bad i like it but they don't compare to the malls in mexico i'm not gonna lie really yeah like, like you go to so this last time i went to a new one that just opened up and it was called Paseo La Fe, mm. and it was fucking massive. You look at it from the outside, and it's a metal building. Yeah, and it's kind of like shaped like this. And then in the middle, they have a big ass mm-hmm. soccer ball. I don't know why. There's just a big ass metal soccer ball in the middle, and all the stores are kind of like around the area. Mm. And then in front, there's in front there's apartments, and they have a big ass pool in the middle. Which is really cool, and they have like H and M, Zara, uh, Louis Vuitton, <laughs> Prada. They have a lot of like stores. They have a Best Buy. To, they have a gym in there too, which is weird. A gym, a gym, yeah. Mm. And then across from it is like imagine another going, gym. Imagine going to the gym at the mall. Yeah, <laughs> that's like, weird. Like, yeah, it's really weird. I don't know. I can't see myself, dude. I can't get myself to go to the gym anymore. Yeah, I go fuck. I just want to work out at the house. Yeah, I'm becoming more in like. I'm becoming like more anti-social for sure. Yeah, like I just don't want to. Like I don't know. Maybe this is a bad thing. Yeah. No, I think I just don't be trying to do shit no more. Yeah. No, it's it's not. I think you just know what you like and what you don't like. Mm. You know, the older you get, the more you're like, I'm not gonna do something I don't want to do. You know. Yeah, and I think when we're, when we're younger, you do more things that you don't necessarily like, 
but you do them so that you can like fit in or have friends or because your friends are doing it you have to do it i think it comes down to that like yeah. you just knowing your again bro just knowing your personality and like yeah oh, like like right now like i don't i don't see myself making like new friends you know like, yeah oh, i don't have no. fucking time i don't know i don't think i can make new friends nah. no which is bad but i mean you think it's bad no <coughs> No, I don't think so. I think um, as long as you have, uh, you're good with just one good friend. As long as you have one good friend, yeah. you're good. You know, mm -hmm. I don't think having, I think having 50 friends, you know, Kanye West once said, one, <laughs> <laughs> quoting Kanye. one, one good, uh, one bad bitch is worth, no, one good bitch is worth a thousand it's, bitches. Yeah. yeah. One good friend is worth a thousand friends. For sure. You know, I don't know. I don't. I don't think like. Who's my? Who's your newest friend? If you can name someone, like think about who you friended recently. No, uh, I have things where like I'm becoming more closer to the people that I was hanging out with. Like back then, yeah. like I'd be like, "Oh yeah, like that's the homie." But now it's like, yeah. now now everything revolves and like. Yeah. Hey, dude, I need help doing this shit. And be like, oh, I got you. And then we create a really good bond. Yeah. From doing that. But like, newest friend? No, bro. I ain't got one. I don't have one new friend oh, in the past. Hard. Do coworkers count as friends? No. Fuck no. No. I mean, no, no. I mean, I don't. I get along with my coworkers really cool. Yeah, for sure. But I, you're not going to go. I'm really out. easy going. So, like, at True Sky, I had really cool friends. Mm -hmm. And now, where I work at, I. The people that I work with and my mm. supervisor are really, really cool. Yeah. And I'm super grateful for that. So I, I get along with them. I don't know if I would take it to like we're friends, but I would like to think that they're friends in a certain level, you know, like. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I'm friends with you in a different level than I'm friends with someone, some other people in our group, you know? Mm. It's a different level. Yeah. You know? But newest friend that I've made would probably be like, in-laws maybe but i guess that's just extending your family yeah that's family yeah. like i'm talking about someone completely random not related to you like well, someone you met like <laughs> i don't know somewhere no nah, i, I, I think one. just because we're so far removed from like yeah. going to parties but and... do you this goes back to being a product of your environment yeah the environment we live in it's not like we're walking to our job and we're running into people you know we drive and then we get to where we work at and that's it you have to make friends where you work at, mm. right? Yeah. It's not like, like, let's say if we lived in New York mm -hmm. and we had to walk three blocks to get to a job. You probably become friend with the guy at the corner store. You or would probably, like. yeah, be friends with the guy at the corner store. You know, a coworker invites you to something that's happening and you go there and you friend someone, you know? That dude running that bodega. Yeah. Or like, let's say you lived in Cali, you know, you get invited to a party and you go, or maybe we just have some lame ass friends. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure there's like a scene happening in Oklahoma that we're not aware of. For sure. But yeah. do you want to be a part of it? No, nah, I'm good. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm good. I'm I'm good with what I do on the weekends and I'm good with the friends I'm, I have. Yeah. I don't necessarily would want to make new friends. I'm open to it. I'm not going to cut anybody off. <laughs> <laughs> don't fucking no, friend me. <laughs> yeah, don't no. add me on Facebook. No, I'm kidding. But, um, no. It's just really hard, bro. Like I don't have I mean shit, man. I don't I don't know. Yeah. It's hard. I always thought it was a bad thing. I would I always try to justify it. Like trying not to having it. friends or not making new friends. Mm -hmm. No. No, you don't have to justify it. You know, it's, it's just whatever. not yeah, it's not who you are and that's it. You know? I don't know. Like I'm I was trying to become a better friend to the people that i'm already friends with because i was a really shitty friend i feel like you are a shitty friend fuck now you now i was shitty you bro. had your no, reasons i mean i'm like yeah. i had reasons but they weren't valid i feel like oh uh, yeah yeah nah, it's different on, but i'm just trying to do better out here yeah but we've known each other for over 10 years yeah is yeah crazy. this is friendships that's gonna like yeah. grow until we die we're gonna be friends type shit probably yeah. yeah most definitely bro yeah i don't see us like not being friends true yeah, I don't see that happening either. I think the your high school friends are your friends forever. You know mm. that, like, if you went to high school with someone, you're friends with them forever. If you make friends after high school, I don't think you're because you haven't gone through as much as you did with your high school friends. You know, 
Yeah, and it was. I think. I think it's the everything was like every experience in high school was a new experience. Yeah. So like living those experiences with your friends, like that's the shit that makes you bond. You know what makes you bond? Mm. Is having a common enemy. Oh yeah. So y- looking back, mm-hmm. uh, you know how we had more war. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. So you know how that's always at the beginning of the year. Uh huh. They do that. And this is me being fucking a uh, giant brain, big brain energy projecting, uh-huh. right? I think they have more war and they have assemblies and our enemy is, are, is more high school mm-hmm. because they want everybody to have a, uh, the same enemy to where we start making friends with within each other. Think about when we started being oh, friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And think why we became friends. Mm-hmm. Or or think about the people that you befriended during that time. You know? Yeah. And it's always because you were in the same classroom and you hated the same teacher. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, it makes sense. It makes yeah. a lot of sense. It's like playing like psychological games. Yeah, they're playing psychological games on you. That we were not even aware yeah. of. It goes back to being patriotic in 9-11. What? You know? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Just People like started bonding at... more because we all had the same enemy. Yeah, it's you crazy. start looking at look. You start looking to help people around you. Yeah, you know what's crazy is that nine eleven happened, mm-hmm. and our parents were still like, "Oh, the U.S. looks like a safe place." I know, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. shit, better than. Yeah, that's true. Better than seeing people hung on bridges. Yeah, yeah. that shit was crazy. Yeah, I remember that time. Did you ever experience anything crazy like that? Like seeing someone hung from a bridge? Nah, not no. personally. The, the no. craziest thing, was I was robbed at gunpoint. But, I mean, that was the craziest shit. That's not that crazy. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know? You know? <laughs> uh, Say you were carrying. Would you have pulled the gun on him? I was so young, bro. Oh, uh, yeah. Now? Yeah. <laughs> Is anything that you have on you not replaceable, you know? I think the most important thing they could take from me would probably be my wedding ring. Mm. Other than that, I mean, you can leave me naked. I'm cool. Dude, uh, and another thing too, yeah, like yeah. it's a yeah, yeah, yeah. Another thing is that I'm not I'm not attached to anything anymore, you yeah. know? You're like, a minimalist. Not even. No, mm. no, no. Hell no, but uh I mean in a way, yeah. but I'm not attached I'm not attached to anything. No. Like I love my parents. I love my spouse. And I love, you know, like, yeah. yeah, of course. But like, I think I gave into the idea that everything is going to end one day. Yeah. Nothing's forever. And I'm like, I'm starting to become okay with that shit. Yeah. Like, I think the know? older you get, the more you're like, oh, every, every like nothing that I do will be forever. Mm-hmm. And there's going to be an end to everything. Yeah. Yeah. Like this podcast. Yeah. What's the time? The time is we have five minutes. But yeah, cool. That was a cool first run, man. Honestly, we did solid. No, I think not so. that bad, honestly. Not that bad, no. no. I don't um, think we said anything that's gonna get us canceled. <laughs> so that's always a win. Yeah. Um uh, it it's perp- good to be back, bro. I I fucking yeah. It's I was a little back. nervous. It's been a, a long time anxious. coming. A long time coming. Yeah. It's taking a while, but we're coming. What's the purpose of the podcast? Honestly, Just... the purpose of this podcast is to document, documentate where we're at in our life. You know, mm-hmm. keep tabs of certain areas that we're going through. You know, like I'm a new dad mm-hmm. and it would be cool to go back and be like, I was like, this is what I was thinking about. Cool. When I was 25. I like that. Yeah. I think that's. Yeah. That's yeah, I think that's cool. Yeah. This is the more mature version of Uncut Gym. <laughs> Honestly. I think it is, bro. I yeah. think we're too excited and yeah. Uncut Gym. Too, Uncut Gym, we were not probably a fuck. Yeah. We didn't care. Nah. No. Nah. But we did put a lot of thought into each episode. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna try to be less of a YouTuber and just talk. Just talk. Yeah. I'm not try to pay too much attention to the outside yeah i'm just gonna release this This is just our perspective and if people share our opinion or thoughts that's cool yeah you know and then i mean for every everything for 
for every content that's out there, there's someone that's going to like the shit that you do. Yeah. And there's going to be a lot of people that don't like it. But, I mean, it is what it is. It comes with it. Yeah. It comes with it. You can't avoid it. Mm-mm. You can't avoid anything. Cool. First episode, bro. First episode in the books. We're back. Let's get it. We're staying.